Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, and I'm gonna be telling you the life and the theological works of uh, Saint Peter Canisius in my brand new video. Subscribe to my channel to see more videos and new updates. Since I couldn't write the notes because it's too long, so I hope you everyone. So you can check out my last year's video of Saint Ignatius of Loyola in the description box below and description link below. See you soon. Bye bye. An important figure in the Catholic Council Reformation that responded to the 16th century spread of Protestantism. The priest and doctor of the church, St. Peter Canisius, is remembered liturgically, liturgically on December 21st. His efforts as a preacher, author, and religious educator strengthened the Catholic faith in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and parts of Central Europe during a period of doctrinal confusion. Writing about writing about Saint Peter Canisius, writing about Saint Peter Canisius in 1897, Pope Leo XIII noted similarities similarities between the late 19th century and the saint's own lifetime, a period when the spiritual, I mean. A period when the spirit of revolution and looseness of doctrine resulted in a great loss of faith and decline in morals. More recently, in a 2011 general audience, Pope Benedict thought that, I mean, Pope Benedict the 16th thought that the Jesuit saint found success in ministry by living as a personal witness of Jesus and an instrument at his disposal bound to him closely by faith in his gospel and in his church. Peter Canis, his name, later Latinized to Canisius, was born in the Netherlands on May 8, 1521. Okay, on May 8, 1521, his faith, I mean, his father Jacob was a wealthy public official but his mother, Agidea, died soon after his birth. Peter began his university studies in Cologne around age 15 and obtained his master's degree before he turned 20. His friends, his friends during this period included, included several men who held to the, Catholic, to the Catholic faith in opposition to the Protestant doctrines then gaining ground in Germany. Despite his father's preference that he should marry, Peter made a decision in 1540 to remain celibate. Celibate. Three years later, three years later, he entered the Society of Jesus under the influence of Blessed Peter Faber, one of the first companions of Saint Ignatius Loyola. He founded the first Jesuit house in Germany and became a priest in 1546. Only one year after his only one year after his ordination, Peter accompanied the Bishop of Augsburg to the Council of Trent. As a theological advisor, he spent a portion of his time in Italy working directly with St. Ignatius Loyola with Saint Ignatius Loyola before leaving for Bavaria, where he would serve as a, as a university professor as well as a catechist as a catechist and preacher. This combination of academic and pastoral work this combination of academic and pastoral work continued at Vienna from fifteen fifty two, allowing him to visit and assist many Austrian parishes which found themselves without a priest during the mid fifteen fifties. Peter's evangelists I mean during the mid fifteen fifties, Peter's evangelistic journeys took him to Prague where he where he eventually found a Jesuit school along with another along with another in Bavaria and later a third in Munich Le and later a third in Munich the year 1555 in particular was a landmark for Canisius Saint Ignatius promoted him to to a leader position within the order which he held until, um, until 1569 and he published the first and longest version of his Catholic Catechism. 
This book and its two shorter adaptations went through hundreds of printings and remained in use for centuries, involved in discussions with Protestants during 1557. Peter made a strong case for the church by showing how the adherents of Protestantism, Protestantism could not agree with one another in matters of doctrine. Meanwhile, he maintained his commitment to religious instruction on the popular level, on the popular level, teaching children, giving retreats, and preaching carefully crafted doctrinally rich sermons to large crowds. To large crowds, Canisius service to, to the Canisius service to the Council of Trent continued during the early during during the early 1560s. Though mostly from a distance, he kept up a demanding schedule of preaching and establishing universities, while also working to ensure that the council's decrees were received and followed in Germany. After it after it concluded. His tireless efforts over the next two decades contributed to a major revival of German Catholicism. A mystical experience in 1584 convinced Canisius that he should cease his travels and remain in Switzerland for the rest of his life. He spent his last years building, building up the church in Freiburg through his preaching, teaching and writing. Peter suffered a near-fatal stroke in 1591, but recovered and continued as an author for six years. The Dutch Jesuit, the Dutch Jesuit saw writing as an, ex as an essential form of apostolic work, a view supported by the continued use of his catechism long after his death. Long after his death, on December 21st, 1597, at the age of 76 years old. 76 years old, okay? He was beatified by Pope Pius IX in 1864, and St. Peter Canisius and St. Peter Canisius was simultaneously canonized and declared a doctor of the church by Pope Pius XI on May 21st of 1925. In a famous saying, I mean, in a, in a, in a famous saying, the Jesuit priest revealed the secret behind the accomplishments of his energetic and fruitful life. If you have to, if you have too much to do with God's help, you will find time to do it. To do it all. To do it all. He is the patron saint of Catholic press. He is the patron saint of the Catholic press and Germany. And of course, he was. The second, he was the second apostle of Germany after Saint Boniface. After Saint Boniface. After Saint Boniface. You can check out my recent video of Saint Boniface in the description box below and description link below recently. And I hope you everyone, I'll be see you in my brand new video. So, you want me to tell the story of Saint Marianne Cope in my brand new video. Bye.